हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री व्हिच इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सो एज स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव ऑल वंडर्ड व्हाट ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री इज ऑल अबाउट लेट अस स्टडी व्हाट इट इज अबाउट ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री इज नथिंग बट द स्टडी ऑफ कार्बन कंटेनिंग कंपाउंड्स सो द ऑब्वियस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अमंग द सो मेनी एलिमेंट्स दैट वी हैव इन अ पीरियोडिक टेबल व्हाट इज सो यूनिक अबाउट कार्बन दैट एन एंटायर ब्रांच ऑफ केमिस्ट्री हैज बीन असाइंड to the study of carbon containing compounds so let us see what is actually so special about carbon and what are its peculiarities so carbon has a very unique property called catenation and this enables carbon to form a large number of compounds around us so what is catenation catenation is essentially the ability to form links with of same uh, atoms of same elements to form longer chains no carbon has very high catenation tendency due to a number of reasons mentioned here let us examine each of these reasons and understand how it contributes to the high catenation tendency of carbon the first reason is given as tetravalency what is tetravalency tetravalency essentially means valence electron which is 4 and carbon has four valence electrons and it can form four bonds but we also know that there are other elements in the same group with whose a valency is also 4 so but they are not as they don't have such high catenation as carbon now let's go to the next point the next topic next reason is given as small atomic size so here we can see that carbon has very small atomic size but the as we go down the group the atomic size increases now the third point is very important to note as it has less diffused p orbitals S and P orbitals are much less diffuse as compared to D and F orbitals which are found in higher elements so the less diffuse an orbital is stronger bond it can form with other atoms so here less diffuse P orbital essentially contributes to high catenation tendency of carbon and how did we end up with P orbitals from the electronic configuration of carbon which is 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 so after examining the first three points we can definitely say that cc bond formation is highly favored that is cc bond is very stable if a bond is very stable which means that it has very high bond energy in fact only ch cf and co bonds are actually stronger than cc bonds so there are also other elements that actually exhibit catenation tendency and they are silicon phosphorus and sulfur the detail about which we will study in detail in inorganic chapters now comes the most important question that why should you study organic chemistry and does it have any relevance to you in person so let's find out what it is about so here we have a woman an image of a woman here and we can see that she is using a particular type of hair dye now if you look at the cover of a hair dye you can see that a typical composition would be something like this it might have oleic acid phenyl methyl pyrazole para amino phenol and 2 methyl resorcinol all of which are nothing but organic compounds now let's look at this woman a little more closely and we can see that she could be using a particular brand of sunscreen lotion a typical sunscreen lotion composition is mainly zinc oxide and titanium oxide tio2 which are inorganic but it also has active ingredients called aromatic molecules in conjugation with carbonyl groups so what is aromaticity and what is conjugation we will study in detail in our next topics now thirdly if you look at this woman again we can see that she is wearing a particular type of clothing so we have a varied range of clothing available to us like nylon rayon polyesters and they are available to us mainly because of synthetic organic chemistry so here we can appreciate how actually organic compounds are all around us and they also find wide applications in important applications like medicine environmental applications energy and synthetic products so this is how organic chemistry is actually applicable and we have seen the various applications now another important thing this is all about the study of carbon containing compounds now are there any carbon compounds which cannot be studied as organic there are carbon compounds which cannot be classified as organic and they are carbonates co3 2 minus cyanides cn minus and allotropes of carbon allotropes are nothing but different physical forms of a given element so the allotropes of carbon are diamond and graphite so they themselves 
cannot be classified as organic. So to summarize, we have seen that what is organic chemistry all about and why uh, organic chemistry is a study of carbon and what is the unique property of carbon and that is catenation and why carbon has such high catenation tendency and what are the various applications of organic chemistry and also those carbon compounds which cannot be classified organic. I hope you are clear with all the concepts discussed here.